And I was going to ask you, does your religion help you in everyday life and how? Now, how did I get there? I am not a particularly religious person. I'm extremely fearful of God. Let me put it to you that way. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to put it. I mean, I don't know if you believe what I just said to you. You know, like I hedge my bets that <laughs> that there's a God up there. He created us and he's watching us. And I'm hedging my bets. I try to do more good than harm because I have to pay for it in the end. So I'm hedging that there's a God and we get judged. So I watch my step, in other words. I'm not inherently good or evil, although I never was the type that hurt animals. I, I figure I'm good. I'm never the type that kicked dogs or set cats on fire, although I knew kids who did. They all became lawyers uh, or surgeons, one or the other. I never had those impulses. So I started the day by speaking to somebody I know. And I said to them, do you know that the, jo the Jewish prayer book opens with a prayer in the morning? The morning prayer, in which the morning prayer, there is a statement. There's a whole sequence. And it says, blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has not made me a woman. He said, that is not true. You made that up. I said, no, it's not misogynistic. But the men say that every morning. Now, I know if the feminists hear this, it's going to cause a lot of problems. They're going to want to burn uh, the Jewish the Jewish prayer book. They have nothing to say about the Quran, where uh, women are actually turned into slaves, where terrorism is actually encouraged in this whole second half of the of the Holy Bible that they use. Yeah, read about it. For those of you who actually don't know what you're talking about, their religious edicts tell them to conduct jihad against the entire world. But nevertheless, going back to the prayer book that the Jewish people use, especially Orthodox Jewish people, those, in other words, who may sound like Bernie Sanders, but don't act like him. Think of Bernie Sanders with a beard and long sideburns, someone who actually believes in God instead of himself and his own madness. So in the morning, Jews get up in the morning, and they, they offer thanks to God for restoring their soul within them. And they said, then they say, God, thank you for giving us your commandments and commanding us to concerning the washing of the hands. So they wash their hands. That's a good idea. Most people don't know what heathens they are by not washing frequently. They think that they're not necessary. It's not necessary. But hygiene is the key to health, by the way. In all of my studies, in all of my years of studying health, do you know that, that hygiene is one of the number one issues in distinguishing between long life and health and anything else, meaning hygiene, hygiene, hygiene. So having said that, first thing the Jews do is wash their hands. I want you to hear the second part of the morning blessing, and then I'm going to get into politics. Believe me, everything is political. So just bear with me. If you'd rather hear about delegates and schmelegates, please, you're tuning into the wrong show. Talk, turn into someone who knows nothing else except delegates and can read you chapter and verse about delegates. I'm not interested in delegates. I'm interested in God right now. So the second thing that Jews read, Orthodox Jews, is this. Bless you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has formed man in wisdom and created within him numerous orifices and cavities. It is revealed and known before the throne of your glory that if but one of them were to be blocked or one of them were to be opened, it would be impossible to exist even for a short while. Blessed are you, Lord, who heals all flesh and performs wonders. Now, this shows you that in the ancient days, the Jewish people were aware of anatomy, while others were swinging in trees and behaving like subhumans. The Jewish people were already aware of anatomy before anatomy was even known to the rest of the human race. And they realized that they had vessels and art arteries, veins, etc., orifice and cavities. If one of them were to be blocked or one of them were to be open, it would be impossible to exist even for a short while. So when an Orthodox Jew reads this in the morning, what is he saying? He becomes super conscious of the fact that his life is temporal, it's transient, and that he owes his life to God. Do you understand what that prayer is? So then you read on. I'm not going to read any more of it. You read it for yourself. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has not made me a woman. So why would an Orthodox Jewish man thank God for not making him a woman? I don't know. You'll have to ask them. Don't ask me. But it's in the, it's in the uh, prayer book. So you can say, well, that's horrible. They should burn that out. I don't know. Talk to him about it. So that was one thing I was going to talk about. I was going to Henry on WABC. You've taken the bait, Henry. What's the topic? Yeah, hi. I want to talk about what you started that we're saying. I'm Orthodox and... 
you said that we're saying every morning that we're thanking God for not creating us women. Um, first of all, we respect very much women. That's why our divorce rate is at 4% and not at 90%. But the reason we're saying that is we believe that females are not coming down on this world to correct anything. They are corrected. They're coming down to help men correct their habits and themselves. Oh, I, you're not, uh, look, Henry, I know, I know what you're saying is important, but so far I've heard one out of three words. So, Robert, you got to do a better job of mod modulating them. It's not your fault. Henry is responding. Henry's an Orthodox Jewish gentleman who is responding to my having read one of the sayings in the Jewish prayer book in the morning where the Jewish people say, Blessed are you, Lord of God, King of the universe, who has not made me a woman. So you're arguing that that's not anti-woman is what you're saying, isn't that? Yes. Yes, and the reason we're saying that is, so we're thanking the Lord for giving us the opportunity to do a lot of commandments that are not given for women because they are corrected already, and it's like a president who has the Secretary of Defense. And he also wait, 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 I'm not, hold it, you, you went over something. You're saying that you're actually glorifying women by saying that because women are more evolved than men? Is that what you're saying? Yes, they are corrected, but the reason we're thanking God is because... At the end, we are give, men are given a lot of commandments that women are not given. So we thank God for giving us the opportunity to serve Him in a way that women are not given. Uh, so you're saying, but why is the woman, why is the woman not required to follow those commandments? Because what? She's more evolved. Because they are born corrected and men are not. So we have. Did you wait, I, I, Henry? You, you're, what you're saying is very important to me. You're saying they're more corrected than men are. Yes, it says that at first. Adam was born, and God saw that he wasn't complete, meaning he has a lot of bad habits, so he created Eva to help him correct himself. That's why men have to always um, cherish women, and in a marriage, we have to give in a lot to, to the women because we have to change our bad habits and be nicer people. So that's why we've given a lot of commands. May, no, May, so that's where the phrase, the better half, comes from. Because when I was a kid, the, the jokes in all of the movies were, well, there's your better half, when they were referring to women. So in those days, even the movies always def deferred to women. Today, they treat women like garbage. Yeah, that, that's correct. And that, that, that's why you'll see, by us, there's only 4%. Uh, the divorce, divorce rate is at 4% and up 90 No, that's so beautiful. What you told me is something I will actually carry with me for a long time, Henry. Uh, you know, people don't understand how important this is, what you just said. It's so easy to read that statement of thank God for not making me a woman and assume it is misogynistic when, in fact, you have just told this entire audience of millions of people the opposite is true. Yes, and I thank you. I, I mean, I lo Henry, I'm, I'm speechless at what a man can learn if he's open-minded. And I just learned, I mean, I learned from you. I'm not saying what you learned from me. What I learned from you. I, so you didn't take a front at my reading it. You didn't think I was mocking the Jewish people, I hope, when I first read it, did you? No, of course not, because I know you, you respect religion very much. And it, yeah, it, but that's so, that's, see, this is the difference between an intelligent person like you and people who are not intelligent and just mean-spirited, who will take no matter what a man says and twist it into something that it isn't. And I thank you for being almost a divine scholar in many ways. I, you're not a, a, a rabbi, are you? You're just an ordinary man, so to speak? I'm a sales rep on the road, and I try to uplift people with spiritual things, but I'm not a rabbi at all. I just, you know, I know what I'm doing, and I know what I'm saying. I'm not doing stuff just because I'm stupid. I know what I'm so doing. I, no, I, I get, so, wait a minute. This is interesting. So, you're on the road selling in a, in a, outside of New York, I assume, or in New York? I live in New York, but I fly all over the country, and ah. I go all over. All right, no, this is, okay, so you're almost, in a way, you're taking a big risk going into strange towns, strange cities. You're an Orthodox Jew. You're wearing black clothing. Are you of the of the uh, uh, um, the Lubavitch sect or which? No, I'm not. I'm actually it's a small sect called Pupa. But let me tell you one thing: when I walk in, let's say to it's a conservative Jewish store or something like that, I see right away the hatred. But after five, after two minutes, they listen to me and how I respect everyone, what they believe in, not how they look, but how what they believe in. Like, it clicks right away, and people... But what if you go into a store where there are no Jewish people? Do they look at you funny? 
they might look, they start asking questions, and thanks God, I know all the answers, I think, and uh, I answered very nicely. I'm not, I'm very respectful to anyone, and they like it. But when you talk to devout Christian people, who are probably the most interesting and respectful of all the people you meet, are they usually very impressed with your knowledge? They are. We go into to different stuff. And as long as people, even in politics, I always discuss politics because I love it. And I talk a lot about you. And people, as long as you respect everyone, even though you have, you know, I think differently than they are, as long as I respect people and I explain my stuff, not screaming, just explaining it, people love it. And, and I, I got a lot of people to change to the, to the Republican side. Not Republican, I'm more of a libertarian, but even Trump stuff. I, I, I change people all the time. Well, we could talk for a very long period of time because I would ask you questions about your travels in the sense that in a certain way, you are a, you, you declare yourself to be an ordinary man here. You are an ordinary salesman like uh, in the Christian religion. Jesus was a simple man. You're somewhat of a missionary of God in some ways, aren't you? Um, I'm not. I am because I have a lot of personal stories that I like to tell people like in every day. I see God every day changing stuff like he sends me a not a bad thing happens to me, but stuff happens to me which is telling me that I have to change something. If I did something wrong to someone in business, anything else, I'll see that day something happening to me and I'll know I have to change it. And I see miracles all the time. And it's, it's, it's regular stuff. I'm just an ordinary guy. I'm not, I'm not like a rabbi or anything like that. And people get moved by it. And, uh, you know, people like to listen to it. But I'm not a rabbi at all. I'm just well, I, I don't want to harp on the negative. You just moved me with what you just said because I sensed that before you said it. But I will ask you this. Have you encountered prejudice? And if so, where? Um, if you can explain yourself, please. What, what you have you, in your travels as a religious man, you don't dress like an ordinary American. I assume you wear some kind of religious clothing, right? Right, right. Um, the answer is no. because, And I don't see anti-Semitism in America at all. People treat you how you treat them. When I walk around, I always give a smile to everyone. And I know a few words of not all, you know, all languages, but I know a little Italian, Russian, uh, Polish. I know a little of everything. And when you say hello to someone, you smile to them, they'll never be, they'll never be bad to you. They always smile back. And I, I love seeing people and I love traveling. No one is bad to me. Not at all, no. Well, you have brought a warm feeling to my heart with this story. And I think you've touched an awful lot of people today, Henry. And I don't know what to say to you other than thank you. I don't know if you you have children. Would they like a picture book about me and my dog, Teddy? Uh, they would love it. I got four. But I want to tell you one thing. I, 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 I'm going for Trump like crazy, and only because you're putting out a lot of ideas, but no one, none of the politicians are picking it up. He's the only one who picked it up. That's why I'm back again like crazy. If Cruz was picked it up, I would go for Cruz, but I think Trump is, is, he is saying everything you are saying for the last few years. That's why I love Trump, and I want him to win, because he's going to take your ideas and implement them. <laughs> well, I didn't put these words in your mouth, but you certainly put these words out to the atmosphere for all to hear. So look, stay on the line, Henry. I'm going to send you the, uh, a beautiful illustrated book that will be out in a few weeks called Teddy and Me, and your children will just love it. And you'll see a lot of pictures of your talk show host, Michael Savage, in there. And there's almost no politics. It's just something else entirely. I needed a change of pace. Henry, bless you in all your travels. I'm not a religious person, but I'm extremely knowledgeable about the forces that operate in this universe. And I want to thank you for that call. Wow. You know, I need to take a deep breath. I got to say this to my audience. Every once in a while, I get a call that's... Uh, What's the word I want to use? A game changer, as we say in American parlance. That call was a game changer. Do you know that? In that, the reverberations of what that man, that unknown man, unknown to us, unknown to you, what that man just said has affected an awful lot of people listening on their radios or on their iPhones or wherever they may be. It's going to make them think about their own behavior in ways we could never, ever understand. And what I'm trying to do here is put out a different vibe in a different direction to pick up different callers who are, who are putting out a similar sensibility about the universe. And that's why I talked about Pope Francis and his encyclical from Amoris Laetitia 
on the beautiful, the beautiful love between husband and wife, and especially long lasting marriages, which nobody talks about anymore. It's turned into a mockery because of our society. And I have to say that wherever it comes from, you go for it, right? We're also talking about God, the other topics, which I don't want to mention right now, but I'll be back to talk about them with you on the Savage Nation.